start recording, throw up a, a emoji, an emoji. Let me know that you're there. Okay. Um, how this becomes important because this is victory. Victory is a very, very um, common, uh, common uh, React JS library to do data visualization. Um, it's also made by a company uh, out of uh, Seattle. And I'm telling you about this because, you know, one, I want to uh, get ahead with this idea of visualizing data. And there are people right now, and it, it, it saddens me that there's someone out there who's copy and pasting in this data when the data change, jizz, right? They're like, oh, now I gotta go change the data. And like someone is actually doing that. And you don't wanna, first you wanna take them aside and hug them and say, I'm sorry but there's a better way to do this. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated to get set up, but it's a, there's a better way to do this. So there's, this is React. Um, the other thing I'm talking about is under Formidable, there are careers. You should uh, take a look at this, All right? So good, good stuff. Oh, no, no, wait, no, Formidable is not out of um, Seattle. Black Pixel is, sorry. I get, I get all these companies confused, but Black Pixel is, so careers okay so then i start thinking about this um it's just talking to somebody who under careers current openings all right let's take a look at our current openings oh, currently no current openings but they also do a lot of stuff with react great company all right and this is going to become uh eventually can you all see my screen oh, okay great all right Am I sharing a screen? Oh, I'm not sharing a screen. You're just looking at my face. Oh, sorry, yo. Uh, no, you're not sharing a screen. Oh, yeah. my bad. <laughs> my bad. Um, again, a React, another React charting library. Uh, sorry, people are uh, gonna rewatch this. Okay. And uh, at the end of the quarter, we're gonna take a look at D3, another, uh, another library that isn't React, but is another charting library. And this one is the better one. And so what I'm trying to show you is React can do a lot, Okay. And there's many ways to do the same things. And if you just understand like one concept, you can reapply it to all the different libraries. So there's that. Okay. So there's that. We go to that. All right. Let's go ahead and get our refresher here. All right. Let's go to the course website under React JS. We're going to go to components. We're still inside of components. And I can paste that into the, to the chat. And let's see if we can't get out at a, at a reasonable time today. Try to be fast about this. All right, again, we have all these parent-child relationships, like so. Okay. We're just trying to uh, rebuild this uh, because we want to not be the person who has to manually put this data in. And today we're gonna to be looking at data. So let's go ahead and do this refresher. All right, so if we open up this pen here, and then we also go and open up the, the professor pen here, Okay, I'm going to see if I can uh, do this. Yes, you can have some gum. Not you, y'all can have gum too. All right, <laughs> let's walk through this. Okay, so this is basically a stack template. This is where I'll, you're going to be spending a, a lot of your time making, making uh, designs, and then you got to uh, make those static templates uh, dynamic, and this could hold uh, X number of users, and that's where we get to this concept of being programmatic, programmatic. Um, I believe this template also uses, nope, this one uses, uh, which one is, eh. All right, so let's go ahead and first thing we need to do is copy out the HTML and forget about all the other stuff. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna pin this tag template in the professor pen. A uh, good place to start is just paste in the static template. Get rid of all the CSS, get rid of the JavaScript for just the time being, okay? Can turn this off too. It's a great place to start. You know, you're just your, your plain old HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Just get that, get that working. Oh, my comics. All right, so that's in there. And of course, this is just the content and we need the actual design. So we're gonna grab in all of the CSS. Okay, this is actually uh, number two, your React number two inside of on, on Canvas. All right, so now that we got that static design, we can say, great, this is working. So what we're, we're gonna do is take our static template and just comment that out. And so how you break up the parent-child relationship is completely up to you. 
it's whatever makes sense to you as a designer. And, and yes, you have, you're, you're in control of that. And um, sometimes I feel like people think I'm exaggerating when I say, you know, designers have the, we're kind of the gatekeepers on this. We are like this, a lot of this stuff goes through us and all right. So please enable JavaScript for this app. That means we have Babel running down there. And then we're going to make this thing easy. React, wake up, need your help. Um, all right, let's forget this is, is React, React um, render, dot render. Am I right on this one? Let's find out. I always forget. Yes, right? Yes. And then we want to make sure that uh, this is outputting something. So just make an empty element. All right. And test. Now, normally this would be a pen. Normally this would be a template. And normally you have something like Gatsby to take care of this for you that you don't have to worry about. Get element by ID, element. Uh, just a heads up, there is a, a cheat sheet on your on Codecademy. So you don't have to keep retyping all of this. Um, where is your cheat sheet? Right there. Yeah, so this is very, very helpful. All right, heck, we can just grab that right there because already I messed that up, y'all. I put a lowercase dom. So, D-O-M. All right, you can get element by ID, therefore, app. There, the, the what and the where. Okay, I always get that set up first. And what's nice about this is you can just copy and paste that from the cheat sheet. You don't have to ever worry about it. All right, let me get rid of that console there. All right, so now that we have that working, let's begin to define our components. All right, so as designers, we should take a look at this. Okay, so let's take a look at this markup. All right, how many children do we want inside of this? We can have, right, uh, that could be a child. Uh, the, this could be a child, right? The, the name and the image, the, the fig caption could be a child and the navigation should be a child. And how you break this down is no different than what you do in Figma. Right, as we talked about uh, last class in Figma, if we take a, if we made components a paid feature of Figma, a lot of people wouldn't be using it. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and make a one parent this figure with a class of UI card and all of these components. Okay, where am I? Let's see here. Let's go. Right, this is where JSX comes into play. All right, it's going to be our parent component. And uh, const, what are we going to call this thing? All right, did I do that correctly? The previous class, all right, component needs to be a capital C, correct? Okay, and that's a React thing. React says, nope, you have to make it a capital C. And if we need a refresher on what a component is, Also, it gives me a time to like sip my coffee. All right, here is a example of a parent component like so. I have a lot of tabs open here. What we're making is basically a stateless function, right? A, a function that is just doesn't have anything um, dynamic about it. Okay? And we'll make that stuff dynamic later. All right. Uh, I already forgot the syntax. There you go. Use your text expanders for this, all right? Use your cop copy and paste to avoid the syntax errors. I like the semicolon at the end, okay? And we're going to return something. And again, we need a return statement only if we're gonna return multiple lines. Good rule of thumb is just put the return statement in there so you don't have to worry about it, even if you're only returning one line, okay? So now what we're gonna do is take that H1 of test and put it into here. And then in here, I'm going to return card because now we made a component called card and we're going to use the forward slash to close up all our lines because react says you have to close all of your lines right with a forward slash like just like a br tag inside of html this will break react react uh the good thing about react and all of these uh, libraries is they're making sure everybody types it the same so that will break okay? and this is also in your homework okay and that will not break okay error 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 right? Uh, not an error, error, error. Okay. So um, get used to this idea of wherever you go work, they're going to, they're going to mandate how you type. And that, that's a good thing, right? We want everybody to type the same way. So, okay. 
Uh, here we are there. All right. Do I sound like someone who's been talking for four hours? <laughs> Voice is going. I still got another class after this. All right. Okay. Let's see here. Car return test. Good. All right. So there is our parent. Now we need to make some children. Uh, child. This one could be the header. This, we're going to make another child here. It's going to be the header. What was the other one here? Take a look at our static yeah, component. Fake caption, the okay. image. Thank you. Uh, data. Uh, right. And then uh, child. Uh, you think I'm right? Then there's navigation at the bottom. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right. Let's make let's uh let's make this easy. Const. Woo, look at this go. All right. Const uh header equals sign. We'll go ahead and fix those later on. We're gonna make these stateless functional components. Look at all this syntax. All right. I'm gonna change these uh, header and data. Um, sure. We'll call it data. Is it description? Data is easier to type. I don't want to do data because um we're gonna be um using data today. I don't want it to uh, confuse us. Description and then nav. Nav. All right, I really do this. Oops, I'm gonna come in here, make all of my return statements. I know, there's, you, we can get into a big nerd fight, but like if you're not gonna return it and you only one line, don't put the return in there. Just do it, make your life easier. All right, we're gonna come in here and uh, something, 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 make a simple paragraph like so. Just make sure that these things are working. A pro tip right here. All right, and then test. I wonder if we can nerd out for a second, y'all. I'm gonna try something. All right, uh, let's see here. Is it this test? No, I can't use Emmet inside of here. Ah, darn. All right, test, test, test. Okay, so now instead of returning just this H when I'm test, we should probably make these a little bit more semantic. There's header, there's description. Colin, do you really do this? Yeah, I don't like typing. I don't like syntax errors. Like just get everything set up and then fill in the blanks. It's it's a really nice, nice way of doing this stuff. All right. Oh, oh I messed this up, y'all. Already, this is where I usually use VS Code that gives yeah. me errors. You need a capital. Correct, thank you. All right, and description. Well, we are 15 minutes in a class already. All right, nav. Okay, nav description header, they're all returning a simple paragraph. Yep, and then we're just going to build this out. All right, and if we need a refresher on how to do this, this is what this was our parent component. And we're gonna go in and take a look at our child component inside of there. This is our sub component. Okay, I'm just going to keep uh, so sorry, you're just gonna the fill in the blanks. All right, so we have a figure with a class of UI card. That's the our parent. So we can come right into here. And a lot of it is just pasting your template. Like you'll be you would be surprised. Uh, Chris Coyier of CSS Tricks and Code Pen said, like, I think people will be uh, surprised at how much copying and pasting we do in a day. And it's not a bad thing at all. There's no shame in copying and pasting. Like know what no once you know what to copy and paste, you can get done very, very quickly. Right. It, and that's the point. So we got, we got our UI card, like this thing is beginning to, to fill itself out. And then we're just gonna drop in, uh, let's see here, dum dum something, something, header. And this is going to be description. And then we have a nav. I should probably call it footer, but we'll run with it. All right. Now it's just wash, rinse and repeat. They think you, you, you got the, the, the skeleton of all this. Okay, like your apps are gonna, your job is to figure out, you know, how is this gonna be break down? Like, hey designer, right? The dev team is gonna like, how do you, how do you wanna break this thing down? You know, what needs to change, right? And how often does it need to change? And you know, where's the data coming in for all these different things? And uh, now it's kind of the easy part. Let's see here, I'm already losing steam here. I'm gonna go, go ahead and grab that. All right, don't let them see you sweat, Colin. I'm not losing steam, I can't wait. All right, so this is a part of our, 
our issue, right? We have this thing right here, y'all, okay? And we know that React can only return how many components because it needs one outermost component, correct? I, I, I ask the question and then I give it away. And so this is why you'll see a lot of divs, okay? Like this, just this random empty divs. Now, but Colin, you said to avoid as many div, 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 div divs as possible. That's where we get into writing good uh, markup up here. But sometimes we can't do anything about that. Like we're just stuck that we're gonna have to wrap this in an empty container. And you know, and um, you know, future versions of HTML and CSS and React, right, are, are gonna help fix some of this. All right, description. What do we have for description? We just have a single fig caption. So, right, and of course, these would be variables that we're gonna talk about in mapping through data. Okay, so we can just drop in that fig caption right there. And of course, the nav is gonna go here. And probably, you know, a better way of doing that div, 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 div that we got going right here. Let's just make it, I called it header. Why didn't I just call it header? There, now I'm happy with that solution. Good. All right, here's our component. So now for the rest of the class, we're gonna talk about data, data, data. Um, the one that I'm gonna, we're gonna be using on something, something, what next, next, next class session is the, the Chuck Norris API. There he is. Okay. We want the Chuck Norris API, right? There is an API. There's a website that basically serves up Chuck Norris quotes. That's gonna be our data. Today, we're gonna to look at pets, right? So Chuck Norris can make you disappear with just a blink of an eye, literally. See the next one, okay. So there's one designer out there that are, is copying and pasting these Chuck Norris quotes. Another designer is pulling in the API. Steven Seagal is not a real person. He's just Chuck Norris in disguise. <laughs> That's every, Chuck is short for Charles. Chuck Norris is, <laughs> okay. Ah, Chewbacca says, sir, to no one except Chuck Norris. <laughs> okay. All right, we're good there, okay. So a lot of good stuff, okay? There's the dad jokes API. There's a, a um, there's a lot of fun APIs and there's a lot of uh, serious APIs. Okay. Very, very serious API. Um, Let's see here, Apple, something, something, Apple, Google, COVID. All right, Apple and Google have gotten together, right? And they're partnering up on uh, this, uh, uh, way to uh, basically you know, track uh, COVID exposure. And they're using APIs so the two companies can talk to each other. They're using APIs so people can, um, some medical professionals can see the data and submit the data. Like this is not a small thing. This idea of an API is, is pretty big. So, all right, all that um, aside, let's go ahead and I, so, we know that we can uh, make a, a parent-child relationship using static data using um, by composing components. I know that's um, weird. But now let's go ahead and actually take a look at uh, data, data. Okay, so there's that. So we're gonna look at today just data in isolation. I just want you to look at just data itself. If we do anything else of it, okay? Because otherwise it just gets really confusing. First one, we're gonna get, we're going to get a refresher <laughs> On the on our fetch API, and this was from what learn JavaScript online, right? This was part of our homework from last quarter, right? There is the fetch API if you want a full, like, a nice rundown of how it works. Um, fetch is a part of ES6. It's relatively new to JavaScript. It came up with the latest version. Basically, the short version is it was really hard to run out and get data. It was really hard to run out and get data like run out of uh, your application, run out and get data and have it come back. It just required another library. It required all these competing libraries. Um, it's the reason we use jQuery for so long because it made getting data easy. I mean, the, sh the, the short of it is this. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna take this uh, API, right? And I'm going to get rid of all that. Get rid of all this. Let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in as a, uh, into the something panel and get rid of react because we don't need it for right now. All right, go ahead and, and paste that in there. 
And this is what you get, right? And this is coming back as JSON. Here's actually the, the raw JSON. And so what happens is all this data needs to get serialized, right? Basically, you take all this formatted data that, that, you know, that looks like this, and it needs to become into a serial line. Like this is essentially one line that wraps. This is one line of text that wraps. And if I had a screen big enough, you could see this all sit on one line. And just like you learn in Learn JavaScript Online, right? Text is just a big old array. So the C, the A, the T. And what you want to do is just parse this key and this value. Parse this key and this value. And that parsing is what a lot of the libraries are doing for us. And it wasn't until the Fetch API came along and said, can we just have this as a part of core JavaScript? Okay. And part of the reason it took so long putting politics about um, the web aside is that people just couldn't agree on the best way to go out and get data, even though we were all doing it at the time. Yeah. So that's a short version of that. So let's go ahead and fetch some data. Okay. So this is the website, uh, Chuck Norris. I, Chuck Norris jokes .io, right? And this is a uh, free uh, uh, API. Some of them require authentication, um, like one that we've used in the past. I don't know if this one is, do you guys still want to do a Spotify project? Um, right, so here's their website. I, I have, we haven't looked at their API, but I believe it's api.spotify.com. Used to be, but Spotify basically says, look, anybody can make an app for us. If you want to make your own Spotify app, Spotify says, do it, please. Right, Spotify is, is even encouraging people, make a better app than ours. Why? Because then we can, we're still going to charge you money to use our API. We're still going to charge you money to use our data. And that's what's, that's what's really cool. And da, 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 why is Colin talking about all of this? Because what do they use to get data from Spotify? Fetch. That's it. Yeah. So go make your Spotify app after, after this quarter ends and, and make your billions off of Spotify app. Weather is another one components something something here all right let's get into this so this was the front facing website right and this is the actual path to the api and if you go to slash jokes right you'll get an error and wherever you uh wherever website you go to they will give you like specific instructions on how they use the api and here's all the documentation and yes as a designer you have to be able to read this documentation Right, and there are the query strings again, right? Everything before and after the question mark, right? And you're gonna search for this. And you know, each API has their own documentation. Some really good, like Spotify, you know, some really basic, like this Chuck Norris one. And some of them, the reason people don't use them because their documentation is not really good, right? And so it, 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 it'll vary. Um, for this one, we just went ahead and just get, let's just get a random uh, Chuck Norris quote. And to do that, we're gonna use the fetch method. Fetch like so. Good. Right, fetch what? Fetch that. Wow. Oh. There you go. Okay, now where did it go? Perfect. What do you have to do with it? Well, you have to turn that, all of that stuff that we just looked at, this, right, into something that, that JavaScript can understand, okay? And so that's where this next part comes into play. So you're gonna get stuff uh, back, right? So you're gonna fetch something, and then there, uh, then literally next is, uh, right? So you get this data back and JavaScript says, then what? Okay, and then you need to do something with that, right? And what I just was talking about, the idea of, you know, parsing the, the data, that's what we're gonna do next, okay? And normally we write fetch statements as this because the URL lines are just very, very, very long. So we're going to uh, make it, uh, bah, 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 bah. A variable, my goodness, All right? There's a variable here called response. Sometimes uh, this is spawn response, right? Sometimes this is a uh, truncated to that, to RES, you'll see them both, okay? Just like event is truncated to E, right? So we're gonna have response, and then what are we gonna do with that response? I love how I'm looking at my solution here is we're gonna run this method of take, take what we got back, right, and JSONify it. That's an actual term, JSONify it, right? Turn it into uh, key value pairs, right? Turn this, 
with all of the headers into something that I can use like this. Okay, turn the raw data into this. All right, so we can actually go, right? So real quick, if I wanted uh, the actual quote right here, right? I'm typing um, response dot what? Value. If I wanted the date that this was, the time that this was created and the date, I'm gonna type response dot created at. If I wanted the ID, response dot ID. If I wanted the actual URL where this, where this single joke sits, okay? It's response dot URL. Right? And if I don't use these key value pairs that are given to me by the API, it's just not going to work. So now we got our, I spelled response wrong. No, response. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, there you go. Woo. Okay. okay. Watch it. All right. Good. Notice that it still works. All right. We're going to take what we get back, our response. And I can copy that. Again, get used to both. And there is a method called JSON, right? And it is a method, so it's going to left, use left curly, right curly, I mean, right paran, left paran. So, right. right, and I'm putting in all this extra space so you can see it. Good, good there. All right, then the next thing you need to do is then we need to do something else, right? So then what? Then this is the good stuff. Okay. And then is another method. Yeah, I'm going to put that curly brace. Now I'll put it here. All right, so now that we got that, now we actually want to take a look at it. And this is part of our, our uh, bleh, high data hygiene, okay? So we're going to take all that and we're going to store it in something called data, right? You can call this variable whatever you like. Notice it's a different color now, right? This response is part of that object, right? That This re response in res belongs to fetch. So we're going to just name this thing data, okay? So data goes, let's see here. All right, and so we're gonna get your data back. And basically you're gonna, it's just mapping through that data, right? It says, take that data and just map through all that. So what I want you to do here is we're gonna go ahead and console.log this. Okay, and we're gonna console.log out data first. And let's take a look at this, something, something. All right, that's everything we got back in a JSON format, All right? That's our REST API. It's, it's, it's just at REST, a capital R-E-S-T. I forget what it just stands for. It might stand for nothing, uh, think about it. All right, and if I wanted just this value right here, Okay, or just, just the quote itself, right? Chuck Norris once kicked a horse in his chin. Its descendants are now known as giraffes. There you go, right? I'm going to do console.log, whoops. All right, so we're gonna do a second console.log. And designers, this is the first thing you do before you start putting data out is it's just data hygiene. Like, can you just get the actual data and make sure that it's working, okay? So we have the entire object, and now what we're doing is we're traversing the object so we can just get the one key, right? So the first console.log gives us everything. The next console.log just gives us this one right here. Okay, and we can even come here, um, go data dot something something ID. Nope, I can't because I'm outside of I'm outside of scope. But, all right, good, good. All right. What I was doing is I was typing outside of here, right? Just so you know, scope, right? From your homework, from uh, learn JavaScript online, and scoping. Uh, something, something, right? If I console.log out data dot here, I'm gonna get an error. Okay, so we know those two line works. We're gonna cop, uh, um, comment those out, right? But notice it's saying, hey, error is not defined because it's outside of the fetch call. Okay. And this is what gets people like this order of execution. Like, wait, 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 I see it here. How come I don't see it here? JavaScript uh, outside, outside of scope, right? It's outside of these curly braces. It's outside of that fence. Okay. Okay. Or inside of the fence, excuse me. It's inside of the fence and we're trying to access it outside of the fence. All right. Good on the fetch call. Okay. All right. Uh, where this gets complicated next week is 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 just putting all this stuff together, right? It it should be easier 
in the future, right? For right now, it's got a little bit more, right? But it's still less than what uh, past classes had to do. All right, let's get our refresher of the map method. Again, you, this is on Learn JavaScript Online. Let's get our refresher on this. What I'm doing right now is I'm basically talking about the, the, the molecules and the organisms to, to, make, to make our application, right? What are the components? Make sure we understand fetch. Make sure we understand map, okay? Make sure we, we understand, um, uh, you know, creating child-parent child relationships, okay? And then we're going to bring the, all those pieces together, okay? All right, let's sim 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 All right, so that's done. Heck, we can even just comment that out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at map. Map also came with um, ES6, right? It's, it's a, the best way to loop through something. At first, once you wrap your head around it, it's like, wow, it, like, I, I don't even show you the old way anymore because there's a better way. Like this is just a, a better way. And this, and this is used very, very often with uh, React, okay? There are other ways to loop through an array Right or loop, loop not not just through through an array but through data an object just a better way to loop through stuff. All right, so the first one here is our original array, right? And we can go ahead and pop open the console because this one's pretty basic. Okay, All right. simplified. There you go, simplified. We can't say basic because that's negative now. I also learned what is it? Was your class was telling me about to be a hot pocket? Is it this class? Is calling me a hot pocket? Apparently that's a negative thing now. I'm not gonna look it up in Urban Dictionary. All right, so we're gonna uh, console.log out ages here. That was on, we got a const, come on, code pen. Code pen is struggling. All right, there it goes. All right, so there is, we have four pieces of info inside of this, right? We can add in a fifth. Okay, so there's our five pieces of info. We have an array called ages and we're just, just displaying the entire array, right? This is everything at once, boom. Now, what if you wanted to do something to each of, of the, the pieces in the array? You wanted to subtract one, you wanted to multiply by one. What dumb example did I come up with a long time ago? Okay, <laughs> basically dog years, that's what we did, <laughs> right? So we got this array, let's see here, we're gonna have a dog that lived to 50 years old, right? And so this is what mapping is doing, okay? Um, there have been some really uh, nice visualizations. There have been really long, long um, uh, articles written about, you know, what uh, dot map is really doing. Um, you could deep dive deeper into that if you wanted to. I just want you to use it because it's really practical. Okay. So in this example, we have these four um, dog ages. And we want to, what we want to say is go through all of this and multiply it by seven for the dog ages, right? because it's seven human years. My daughter's not really interested in this. I want a dog. Okay, she wants a dog. Mom All right, mom, let's get a dog. Yep. All right, so, and then, so that basically what we need is we need another container for this. So the good thing about this is it doesn't destroy, it's non, um, yeah, basically think of what good it is, non-destructive. It's keeping, it's maintaining the original array while, while giving you a new array. Right, so these are the ingredients, and these are basically the 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 products made from those ingredients. Okay, all right. Okay. So let's go do that. Did you want to hang out for this lecture? Oh, it's it's every seven years for a person because it goes seven, fourteen, twenty-one, and then twenty-eight uh -huh. instead of thirty, fifty, because that's just zero days. Okay. That's not dog age. Okay. Thank you. I don't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we need another place to store this, okay? So we're gonna store this in this, and then we're gonna say, hey, ages, we're gonna dot map, okay? All right, so when I first was learning map, I was like, all right, the next part was like, all right, really confusing me. You're basically defining another variable right here, right? And that could be whatever you like, right? And I always think about this as just, you're just defining variables inside of there. And so I should just do this. What we're doing here is we have the ages and we're just gonna map through this method, okay? So you know, be careful, right? Again, this is a, a, a global method that's a, a, a part of JavaScript, okay? In this case, 
So normally what we have is a something singular. So the common convention, if this is sing a plural, this is singular, right? So you'll see this a lot, right? People have an array called people, and then there'll be a percent in here called person, right? And, and, and I'm, I'm pausing here because I, this is just common convention. And it, for me, the readability took a little bit of time to, to wrap my head around. Um, another one here is you'll have like uh, students, and this is this is a common one, right? This is one we'll work with, right? What do you think is going to go here? Student, student, that's it. Okay, and that is just something you you get used to working with the map map method. All right. Oh, this is going to sing door. That's map map map. What is that Dora song about map? I'm recording myself. Map, map. Is it backpack or map? Hmm. All right. So now we're going to take ages, which is up here. So take this array, map through it. And what we can do is now we're going to take age, right? Take the singular. Don't do this again because you don't want the entire thing. And again, this is just a variable that you define, right? This could be Colin for all we care, but does that would make even less sense. So use age singular. And then you can do whatever you want to that. Take age and age gets, whoops, age gets itself in this scenario. So age, okay. Get just used to that, All right? Take the thing and then do something to that same thing. Okay. In this case, we're gonna multiply seven and you get a uh, const. Uh, we're gonna console.log this out. So much for a short lecture, y'all. Ah, too much. Every time I think I have it figured out. All right. Good. Okay. There is the map. Um, I believe Fireship uh, .io has a really map. There is someone on YouTube by the name of Fireship who makes these uh, like blank in 100 seconds. I think he did something on map. Array map in 100 seconds. Hey. All right. We'll take a look at it at the end of class. Okay. So I'll put that in. All right. Good, good. All right. Let me stop sharing. We're going to watch Fire Ship for uh, 100 seconds. And then we'll do the last piece of data. Hmm. Sorry. We can't hear it. App <laughs> state. This is known as imperative program. We had it there for a second. Oh, okay. Oof. Oh, we're going uh, online in the fall too, eh? Okay, <laughs> let's see here. A is equal to the original. Your audio now? All right. Yep. Array Thanks map, you. create a new array so. by calling a function on every element in a different array. Imagine we have an array of squares. We can call a function on every single one of those squares using map to convert it to a new array of circles. In other words, it's just a loop, where the goal of that loop is to create a new array. In our code, let's start with an array of objects that contains some user data. 
our goal is to take this array of objects and convert it to an array of strings that only contain the usernames. We could do this imperatively by creating a new empty array, then use a for loop to push each individual username to the new array. Notice how we're using statements to change the app's state. This is known as imperative programming. Map, on the other hand, is declarative and describes how to create this new array using a function. The new array is equal to the original array mapped to a function. The function is passed as an argument to map, and it's called on every element in the original array. Your function has access to the current element in the loop as well as its index. In the body of the function, your job is to compute a new value and then return it. And we've now solved the same problem we did with the for loop, but with less code and without mutating the internal state. If you're a React.js user, you'll often see map used to take some initial data and then map it to JSX for the actual UI. Or maybe you need these usernames to do something asynchronously like fetch additional data from the database. You could do that by mapping them all to an array of promises, then running them concurrently with promise.all. One anti-pattern to be aware of with map is that you should only use it if you plan on using the new array. If you just need to run a loop, consider for each or a regular for loop instead. This has been Array Map in 100 seconds. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. All right. So he's... He's the, the creator, the same person who made the you know, uh, history of JavaScript video that y'all watched. He makes good videos. All right, it's always nice to get a different voice on this stuff. All right, so there's that, mapping through data. All right, let's take care of the last one and get out of here. All right, now we're gonna talk about displaying map data. All right, so the hard part right now is we get this uh, data and it's all local and uh, the best place to start is sometimes you'll just get uh, just a flat JSON file so we could come into here and we could link up to uh, an external JSON file if we wanted to um, instead there's just a very very simple uh, uh, array right here okay, an array has this array has five items right each right and each of the items is uh, index sorry each of the items is an object and each of the objects have one, two, three, four properties, right? So if we wanted um, the name, we go pets.name. If we wanted the animal, we go pets.dog. Good. Okay, so we have an array of objects. And this is mostly, this is a lot of the time what you'll get back from an API is an array of objects, right? We want a, a collection of things and those things have different properties. Like students have their, their name, their date, their hometown, those things. All right, in this case, we just have uh, pets. All right, we can make this thing easy. Let's make this easy. All right, into the master professor pen. All right, let's clear this out. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, I forgot to add in Babel. I mean, React. Ooh. Okay, React Production, React DOM, good, good, good. All right, same thing here. We don't have a pet list just yet. Come on, Copen. Oh, we don't got. We don't have anything for root. That's why. All right. See what I just did there? I know it was tedious to watch me do that, but I forgot this this part. And I, I can't rec uh, suggest this enough. Just walk through your process. Okay. Again, we if you try to type JavaScript, especially like uh, top to bottom, lin linearly like an essay, it's not going to work. And you don't even write essays lin linearly. So, all right. So now we got that working, right? We diagnosed that there's nothing inside of our HTML. Okay. And then we have no styling for this. Okay, so let's go ahead. It's so weird to like paste your own code. Y'all don't know how weird that is. All right, let's go const.pets. This is where all of our data is. And we want to make sure that we can actually get inside of our data. So we can go console.log. Okay, I'm just going to stop at the key points here. So if I want pets, right, if I wanted the first pet, all right, it'd be pets zero right and it's going to give me the name of coco and on there should be coco and there's coco right there okay and so again a good place for if i wanted rex it'd be zero one two three four 
dot name. And if I want in Rex is uh, animal, uh, I want in Rex is a uh, name, how about age? Let's get Rex's age. So there's Rex and he's, he's 0.5 years old. Okay, do this first. Just, you know, check your data hygiene. Like make sure that it's, it's something that you can access. That this, this right here will save you a lot of headaches, right? Cause you'll be typing something like this isn't working. And just, we're just typing the wrong uh, uh, variable name. So get that going. All right. So this, we only have one uh, parent, this const of a uh, pet list. And finally we get to the, the two props. All right. So normally what we're doing for our stateless functional components is just this. Yeah. And what we're trying to do now is actually pass in, in, in this thing called uh, properties or props, right? And the, the properties of our data. Okay? And that's what's getting, getting passed into here. So for this to work, we're gonna do our same return statement. Okay. Right, multiple lines, just get used to that. And okay. notice the process here. And this is going to be what? Invisible student, pet list, invisible student. There you go, thanks, invisible student. And that should return test, which does, okay. It's all, it's all, it's all this, be systematic about it. All right, so when they're not, bleh, now what we're gonna do is pass in these props, okay. And these props are gonna have our pet names and the props are uh, related to that, okay. And props is defined by React library, so you can't make a variable called props. Don't make a, a component called props. Props uh, wants to belong to um, React. All right, then we can console.log the same thing. Console.log, what exactly is props? Okay. And it's probably too, it's too complicated for this, but it says console. Let's go ahead now, you can refresh this right and there what it props is is just an empty object right it's it's giving you an object that you, that you can access it's giving you uh, an object that that you can hook into right it's a it's a empty placeholder all right and so what we're going to do is we're going to say hey go get uh props but get this array okay so we're assigning right this array into our props okay so we can use props to send them down here okay and this, this gets us at first, right? We have an attribute called pets, which is the name of, of the channel that we're passing our stuff in. But then we also have our, our data, which is also called pets. But this is no different than web one, right? Button as a class, button as an ID, button as an element, okay? It's all in, in context. So um, I like this. You know, if I had to do this again, I'd probably make, I'd make this property instead of being pet list, just pets, just to see, just to show us the, the context. Okay, pets, pets, pets. Okay. But just like language, just like any language, right? Cool and 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 hot means different things in context, right? Same thing with this this language. Where am I? All right. So there'll be clear what's happening here, right? We have this object. This is hey, stick stuff in this object. What are we going to call this thing? Pets. Okay. Now if we don't do this, we can't loop through the object. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make a const there called console.log pets. And now what we're going to do, instead of logging out props, we're gonna log out pets. So we can see this. And, whoa. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Am, am I on the right pen? Probably not. All right, so it's still undefined. Why is it undefined? Because we haven't gotten it back yet. That's right. Okay, so we're getting through this. Okay, so there's our return statement, and this is basically where we put stuff on screen. And another way to show it is like, put stuff on screen. Okay, up here is store stuff. If I had to write them some uh, pseudo code for what is actually happening here, or display stuff, here we go. Display stuff, store stuff. All right. So we got props.pets. Now what we're gonna do is there is our map method. 
right there. We're basically saying go uh, go inside of all, all of our pets, okay? And the, let's map through that. So let's go ahead and do this first, like so. So we're gonna go pets.map. Okay, before we do anything else, let's go uh, pets.map. Okay. And what we're gonna be, my, what, bleh, what are we gonna map out? Pet, okay. We're gonna map out each individual pet. In this case, I decided to make it P. So we can make it simple P, right? And then our P, which is gonna be a function, curly brace inside of there. What I want us to do is not output anything, but just go ahead and console.log. So what I'm normally doing is just moving my console.log around my code. So just to follow, follow the, the order of execution here. All right, so we're mapping through pets, P. We gotta pass those in as a props, P, yep. Oh, I gotta pass this in. All right, uh, what I'm doing right here is I'm passing this in. I think this should work without it, but let's go ahead. All right, so let's go ahead and map out P, 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 okay. And if we go P.ID, we should see, right, our loop of uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and seven. Pets is undefined. Oh no, pets is defined, code pen. Code pen has been buggy for me. So let's check this. I'm sorry, Chris. Chris Courier. No, pets is defined. Y'all see the error here? So dot log P I D. Do I have to pass it in first? That should work without it. Hmm. Pet list, pet list. There's our prompt. Where is my error? Oh, I can't just map a... Uh, Long day, y'all. <laughs> I'm missing something. Oh, uh, it's on the, the return statement here. Hmm. I should get my p.name maps. All right, well, we're running over and you have the solution there, but I'm gonna talk about the solution. I have, it shouldn't break at that point. So there, it went away, a code pen. Anyway, um, our error is gone. And so once we, we, we get not, all, go ahead. It, it's not because you're not returning pets from pet list, is it? Because you know, in 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 your in your uh, professor pen, you're returning H one. That wouldn't matter, would it? No. Because it's. I, I, you know what my guess is now that we typed the same thing and the error went away, code pen was just catching up. Right, it's trying to parse it as I type it. Code pen's trying to to render it as I type it. I know, Colin, stop blaming code pen. Uh, run the stuff locally with uh, VS Code, and you'll get a lot of this, so these errors. Hmm. Now that we we have all this, right? We're looping through all this. We have to store it somewhere. So now we're going to make a, another variable here. We're going to be quick about this, and we're going to go ahead and call this thing list items. Okay. We're going to store all that inside of there. Okay, and we want to put that inside of our return statement. So for lack of time, I'm just going to grab all of that. All right, so what we don't want to put out is, is test. 
we want to actually return our array, which is right here. Again, we're returning one thing and we're outputting all of the dynamic stuff in there, right? So the UL, uh, these are all list items and the list items have, um, they're gonna loop through all the list items. So I'm gonna grab this chunk. Okay, check my syntax. All right, so now our errors are saying, right? So now Ethan, this is right because we're not sending it, we're not passing it out, okay? I was worried about the error up here. All right, so we can name this whatever we like, okay? But what were we sending out? Value of pets, right? And there we go. Now we've have data, right? We've successfully manually walked through that data and now we're automating that process um, a react thing is watch this. I'm going to remove this attribute of key. Okay. And what I like about your homework, uh, let's see here, we're going to get a warning here. Come on. Well, we should get a warning here that says, hey, when you map through stuff, you need a unique identifier. And so what we want to, just so you know, right, sometimes th these are going to change, right? This data here is, is going to change, right? The dogs are going to get older. Okay, and so that data is gonna change. And what we wanna do is associate the, the first dog with a unique ID and that unique ID doesn't change. So one of the things that people like and dislike about React is we have this, this attribute called key, right? And you can put something unique in there. And most of the time, the data you're gonna get is gonna be unique. So as a designer, you're gonna look at this and go, well, what's unique? What, what will be more like uh, immutable about this, right? And this is the ID there. So p.id okay and sometimes this is just a number right number one number two three so that way we can always reference uh, the id of one to coco and the id of two to max and that's that there's a lot of yappy yappy for a uh, mappy mappy Woo. all right i'm gonna stop recording okay